Joining us now is NFL linebacker, University of Pennsylvania professor, Brandon Copeland. Brandon, it's great to have you here. Uh, obviously, uh, our viewers know him uh, as Liz is. We're, we're big NFL uh, fans uh, overall. You know, these players, look, there's, there's only so many Tom Brady's out. Well, there's really only one Tom Brady. So these these lower level <laughs> these lower level players they make it a year they make it two years you know what do you say to them if they get injured and that career is over what do they do Yeah yeah I mean obviously we we come into a lot of money fast um, and you know for most people you have a, a different type of earning curve over your entire life and. Um, for us, we start making a lot of money early on in our lives and we have no experience with it or, or little to no experience, I should say, and, and, and no financial education around us. So, you know, the biggest thing that a lot of guys are doing nowadays is they are trying to flex their brains and their muscles off the field. So a lot of guys, you see them starting to dive into different types of investing, um, alternative investments, venture capital, real estate. Uh, but first and foremost, when you're coming into the NFL, the first thing you need to do is focus on being in the NFL and being a player in the NFL. Because like you said, uh, the average NFL career, I think, is less than three years now. It used to be three and a half years. I think it's 2.78 now. Mm -hmm. um, and so you need to focus on actually being there long enough to start to stack the checks mm -hmm. so that you can put it to work for you throughout the rest of your life. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of these guys where, you know, they have this this crew that kind of hangs on. And sometimes that can be bad news financially uh, for them, you know, even while they're still actively playing. But isn't the NFL trying to, to also get this message out uh, that these guys need to really focus on the financial side of their lives as well? I think it's ultimately I think it's a lot of uh, players, honestly. I mean, you have these uh, ESPN 30 for 30 brokes and uh, no player wants to <laughs> end up on the next uh, episode or the next, you know, series uh, within that whole, you know, uh, ecosystem of, of being the broke player. So, you know, guys are, are following the LeBron James of the world. They're following some of the other folks who have made it cool to do things off of the field and and the NFL they have a great rookie program that tries to develop you uh, but ultimately you know when you make it to the NFL you you also are bringing the dreams hopes and aspirations of a lot of people with you so the first lesson you got to learn is how to say no and how to preserve your own self so that you can create wealth over your lifetime but then too you also have to you know strip away your ego as well too and and realize that none of us are actually superhuman we we feel like superhumans on sunday but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're all going to have a 10 year nfl career and mm -hmm. so when you start to think of every single check as what could be your last one uh you start to spend it differently and you start to say no to things that you otherwise would say yes to yeah yeah no and, and you know you you come from a, a, a legacy you are an nfl I mean, your, your your grandfather played for the nfl so you you know this is <laughs> yeah. in your blood this is, and we were looking at video of you out there talking to these kids and these young players i think that's really inspirational you know and, and also too you, you yourself are inspirational i mean you you know, you interned at UBS. I mean, you got into finance early in addition uh, to, you know, to your football career. What did you learn from that? Yeah, I learned a lot. I mean, I learned so many different things. I learned, uh, you know, the biggest thing that I was taking from those internships and especially the ones that I did once I got into the NFL was, one, how to preserve wealth and how to use leverage properly. You know, I think that... Um, you know, you, you I came into the NFL my first year, season. I was day trading while playing in the league and, and I had no understanding of leverage and and trying to, you know, offset gains with different strategies and different things of that nature. And so for me, taking those internships was to learn how the pros do it. You know, mm -hmm. as a, a player, my my job is to play football. And so um you know, I spend a lot of hours of my day and most of my week thinking about how can to beat my opponent. Um, there's other people whose jobs, they spend that same amount of time to focus on how to uh, gain money and, and create wealth over time. And right. so for me, it was how do I study the pros and, and take what I can to help you know, increase the net worth for myself and my family, but also for me, more importantly, it's also about who can I help with it. Well, you're helping people in real estate. We're, we're, I got to get this out to our viewers before I let you go. We're about out of time, but you've got a Netflix real estate show. How did that happen? <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, we uh we hit top ten for a while there too. Maybe maybe we can get back up there. But no, it's a Netflix show called By My House. I'm uh, fortunate to be sitting next to some amazing amazing investors. You got the CEO of Redfin, Glenn Kalman. You got the CEO of the Corcoran Group, Pam Liebman, and you got Denisha Reister, an amazing investor out of California. And we're all literally competing to buy people's homes throughout the country. And so um, it was an amazing experience. And I'm a real estate investor myself, but honestly, I've never heard the the sellers you know, tell me all the emotions going into the background of their homes. And so it was definitely a different experience because as an investor, you don't want to have emotion. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, your heartstrings get a little pulled when they're standing right in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Brandon Copeland, don't I know it? Don't I know it? Well, it's great to have you here, Brandon Copeland. <laughs> and, and congratulations on your success. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Cheryl. I appreciate you. you have bet. a great weekend. You too.